I'm your friend, your friend in Jesus. Oh, oh, oh. Yeah, 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 yeah. Come on. Down. 3113 Street. Welcome. Um, if you don't mind, if you're able, maybe to help blood circulate, stand for the reading of God's word. Come along, circulation, come along. The Bible says, Know ye not that the unrighteous shall not inherit the kingdom of God. Be not deceived, neither fornicators, nor idolaters, nor adulterers, nor effeminate, nor abusers of themselves with mankind, nor thieves, nor covetous, nor drunkards, nor revilers, nor extortioners, shall inherit the kingdom of God. And such were some of you. But you are washed, but you are sanctified, but you are justified in the name of the Lord Jesus and by the spirit of our God. You may be seated in the presence of the power of our Lord. Amen. Uh, of course there will be a redo. But I would like to offer to you the subject this morning, the making of us. Uh -huh. right. Uh -huh. The making of us. I'm, I'm trying to chop so y'all pray for me, right? Because okay. I, I had some things built in here to preach today. Yeah, yeah. Part two. Part two. In the warmth. <laughs> One of the problems congregation faces is sometimes people forget who they used to be. Amen. Amen. And in doing so, we mistreat each other sometimes because sometimes some of us think we have elevated to a position we're already in heaven mm. and we just haven't transitioned yet. Yeah. And so when we get around folk who mess up, sin, say the wrong thing, do the wrong thing, operate the wrong thing, we kind of mistreat them. Sometimes it's involuntary. Sometimes it's subconsciously. Sometimes it's purposely. Because our ego, our attitude have elevated us to a position where we think we're a little bit better off than we are. I want to share with you this morning, and as brief as I can, that we all have the same background. I don't care where you were born. I don't care what your skin color is, mm -hmm. how much hair you have or don't have. Mm -hmm. I don't care what your language was or currently is now. Paul said, all have sinned yes. and come short of the glory of God. Yes. And if we're honest, all of us needed a makeover. Yes. If we're willing to tell ourselves the truth, all of us was in a bad predicament as it pertains to our relationship with God. Amen. You know your practice and my practice, whatever we were had our PhD in, was going to prohibit us from gaining entrance into the kingdom of God. Amen. That's what Paul is telling us, right? For you know ye not that as many of us who are practitioners, and not just practitioners, some of us became specialists. Some of us elevated to the point of expert in all the things that would keep you on the outside of God's kingdom. And those things broke us. Those things shattered our psyche. How do I know it shattered our psyche? Anyone here made a decision to do something you know you shouldn't have done, but the cognitive faculty of your mind told you it was all right to do this dirty thing at least one time? Yeah. Yeah. Any one of you ever been in a position where you realize I'm in the wrong place at the wrong time and still stayed there? Yeah. Anybody in here who's buttoned up, got your gloves on and your earmuffs running, are able to recognize there were times I chose to live in that faraway country instead of doing the right thing that God wanted me to? Yeah. That's the making of us. Yeah. Oh, oh, that's right. 
What is bringing us to where we are right now? I thank God that he didn't leave me in my brokenness. I thank God that he's able to take me and mold me and shape me into something new. I hear that Paul talk about in 2 Corinthians 5 and verse 17, if any man be in Christ. Can I have a minute? The phrase any man implies it doesn't matter your background. It doesn't matter what you've done previously. Whatever your sin, your it is, God can have it. Well, whatever, whatever's got a hold of you that causes you or plays a role and you making bad decisions in life, no matter what it is, God can handle it. But what's important is that you never forget who you used to be in order to empower you in whom God is making you right now. Paul says in Ephesians chapter 2 and verse 11, he says, Wherefore you Gentiles, remember you were called uncircumcised by those who were circumcised by hands. He said at one time you had no hope. You had no promises of God. But now, because your position changed, the making of us, you now have hope. You now have it. inclusion in God's promises. That's the making of us. Right, right. And then he says, Paul brings us into our text, and I'm, I'm trying to land because I'm getting warm and y'all chilling. <laughs> he says, he says in the verse 11, we have to deal with the phrase, can I just take verse 11? Because yeah. yeah. this, is, this is troublesome. Because I had a lot more I wanted to say today. The tech, no, because if I don't, I'm, we ain't going to land. First, he says, and such were some of you. The making of us includes an intentional, purposeful decision not to return to what excluded you from the kingdom. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. It is a thought process that says I will not engage in what disengaged me from God in the first place. Yes, this is why you read Psalm 51. Psalm 51 is a, a, a psalm of repentance by David. He done abused his authority as king, took another man's wife, tried and did have the man assassinated, and then had to be told by his best friend through the use of an analogy that he was the wrong man doing the wrong thing. Y'all still online with me? Now, David was not just an ordinary man. He was king. Yeah. Yeah. High position. Connected with God. A man after God's own heart. Yeah. But yet, had to come back and say, Lord, blot out my transgressions. Yes, sir. Any of you ever feel like David? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. I know we don't have the authority David did, but we had some power that we abused. Yeah. We, we misused and abused our bodies. Amen. We inhaled, snorted, shot, smoked, yes, drank things yes, that were toxic to the body. Yes. Yes, we practiced unprotected or protected marriage out sex outside of marriage. Yes, Are y'all still online? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Preach. And some people were running from physical diseases but it's the emotional connection that's causing the most damage. Amen. We shared so much DNA that now we have no idea who we are. I, I got the move. I got the move. I got the move. Some of us, some of us were so locked up in the tangible things, 
whether it was chasing money, chasing our career, chasing our identity amongst dead folk, that we lost reality of our connection with God and it broke us. Any form of peace we tried to find, it never helped. We looked for peace in the club, but we couldn't find it. Look for peace in the bottle, yeah, yeah. but we couldn't find it. Yeah, yeah. Look for peace in ungodly relationships, yeah. but we couldn't find it. Yeah. Look for peace in material things, yeah. but we couldn't find it. Yeah. Look for peace in sexually immoral activity, but we couldn't find it. Look for peace in places and times that would persuade us we were still good, but our hands were still dirty, and we still couldn't find any peace. We look for peace in as as there used to be a song, the glamorous life. Yeah. Uh -oh. And you still can't find your peace. Yes. Why can't you find your peace? Because God told us that his hand is not shortened, that it cannot save. And his ear is not too heavy that he can't hear. But your sins and your iniquity have separated between you and your God that he will not hear. And when God can't hear you, you can't have peace. Because the only peace we can have is when God is the protector and the provider and the champion of our lives. I'm getting warm and y'all cold. This is why, this is why Jesus said, in John 14, 27, peace I give unto you. Uh -huh. Y'all lying? Yeah. The very idea that peace is being given is that the recipient is void of true peace. Yes. Yes. Let me see if I can explain it to somebody. Some of y'all might be like me. One of the best vacations I ever had was held on a cruise ship. And when you're riding the high seas, and don't y'all judge a preacher, but I like carnival more than anybody else. Carnival be having it popping. Y'all, y'all in line? It be wild and wide open on carnival. They call it the fun shit. Some of y'all laughing, know exactly what I'm talking about. Don't let me see your Instagram. <laughs> But you know when you're on the cruise ship, they assign you a card that's either connected to pre-deposited money or a credit card. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. While your sailing is full of peace and tranquility. Because you swipe, tapping, and giving your number. But when that ship <laughs> is coming close to the shore to let you loose before they reach the dock. They disturb your peace by bringing you the bill. And sometimes that bill is heavy because we lose our mind because there's no control with our tap, swipe, and give up. Y'all in line with me right now? And so there is no real comfort because once you done pay, play, you got to pay. Yeah. 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 Come on, somebody. Yeah. Yeah. I done seen enough TikToks where people are at the customer service desk on the cruise ship because their bill is overdue. Yeah. And that's the same thing sin does to yeah. us. Yeah. It fools us in the good time thinking well I'm getting my groove on but eventually there is a bill that's due and the bill is due with God so Jesus has to come and remake us because when you broke you can't afford parts when you don't have money you can't remodel anybody online you know you want to redo your wardrobe if your bank account ain't hitting ain't no change into your wardrobe some of us can't even go to rainbow it <laughs> some of us be, be trying to uh, oh man what you told me that was sister Ty I went uh, thrift 
shopping. Come on, somebody. Boutique shopping. Let me, let me help somebody. Let me help somebody. You will never get a discount on sin in your life. There's no coupon to help lower the price for sin. But I know somebody. I know somebody who will not only pay your bill in full, but will also supply you with peace so you can have a great life. Anybody glad that Jesus could say peace I give unto you? Not as the world giveth, give I unto you. See, there's a difference between worldly peace and divine peace. Worldly peace comes with an expiration and limitation. Amen. 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 Just like your vacation, my, my honey boo. Y'all, y'all, y'all pray for us. We love y'all, but we need a little bit of warm weather injection. Yes, sir. <laughs> and also, Wednesday is her birthday. If the Lord said the same, and the creek don't rise. Amen. 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 And we're going to go to her favorite place on earth. Yeah. <laughs> and we gonna go but a bill's gonna be due that's gonna interrupt our fun y'all not with us that's the, that's the only part about traveling that you don't like that you gotta pay the bill let me show you how good God is even though we indulged ourselves in sinful practices, because of God, we never fully paid the price for our sinfulness. Somebody ought to say, thank God. That you didn't, all you have to do now is leave the tent. That's all, that's all you got to do for your bill is leave the tent. Well, what's the tent? Praise God. Because the making of us means God is remaking us and we don't have to pay a price. Amen. And to give you the confidence that you can do it, watch Paul in verse 11. I got the land. I got the land. I'm holding y'all hostage. I'm up here longer than I thought I was going to be. He says, and such were some of you. You can no longer be an active practitioner mm -hmm. in sinful activity on purpose. Yeah. 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 There's a difference when you don't know better. Mm -hmm. Amen, somebody? Amen. But if you know what you're doing, now that ask, how many of you never know what you're doing? Huh? How, how many of you are never aware of what you're doing? You remember in Isaiah 55 yeah. where the Bible says, God says, I will put my law on their inward parts. You ever realize that when you're doing, maybe it's just me, but when I'm, when I'm about to do dirty, there's a sense, don't do it. Yeah. Any of y'all in line with me? Any of y'all when, when, when you're about to engage in activity yeah. that is unholy, mm -hmm. get a sense that says, don't do it. Yeah. 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 You, you ever been in the middle of something? Yeah. Yeah. And you getting it in? Yeah. Yeah. And your body like, don't do it? Yeah. Come, come on, somebody. Look, the young boy like, Brother Bradley, watch your phrases. Watch your phrases. I try to be real and relevant. I ain't hiding nothing from y'all because y'all going to say it in the street. You going to put it on your Instagram. You going to TikTok it. Why you want your preacher not to talk about it? <laughs> we do all these things. And then there is that thing that tells you, don't do it. You know, that's God warning you. You are going to a place you are not designed to go to. Yeah. You weren't made. 
You weren't made to be a fornicator. Amen. Amen, somebody. Amen. You weren't made to be an adulterer. Yeah. Why? Because the God you serve, he would he tell you in Exodus 20, I am a jealous God. Yeah. Yeah. Well, guess what? Since he's a jealous God and will have no other gods before him, guess how he going to treat you? You get his undivided attention and you have no competition. Ain't God good? God's so good that he can pay strictly attention to you and still bless me. That's how awesome God is. All you have to do is be his child. Some of us parents know this. My, 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 my house tried to tell my wife and I that we have favorites. And it's not intentional. And it's not purposeful. Right. It's just sometimes things just look like yeah. one gets more favor yeah. than the other. Yeah. It looks like it. Yeah. But the love is always the same. Yeah. 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 Don't get mad at your brother and sister in Christ when God pours something in their life that you might not have Amen. and then come to the conclusion God don't love you. Yeah. Amen somebody. Yeah. Because they might be looking at you yeah. seeing some things that you have yeah. that they don't have yeah. that they may be going God don't love me. Yeah. But the Bible teaches us John 3:16 for God so who's in the world? Who's part of the cosmos? Yeah. Man if I had some time. Who's part of the cosmos? You, you, you. I'm about to sound like Oprah. You get a car, you get a car. You, everybody gets the love of God, especially those who love the Lord. Now watch God show you he loves you. Come on, meet me at verse 11. I'm landing. Watch God show you. He says, and such were some of you. That's the text, right? He says, but you are washed. You have gone through a spiritual cleansing yes. that made you so clean you can now be in true fellowship with God greater than it when Adam had it. You have something Adam couldn't even see coming. Adam walked with God. Adam talked with God, but Adam didn't have God living in him through the Holy Spirit. And the Holy Spirit can only inhabit clean tabernacles. Are you online? And since I'm here, since he only can inhabit clean tabernacles, this is why the emphasis of the text is on such words, some of you. Keep that temple clean. Amen, somebody? Because the making of you means you got to revise your friend list. Amen. The making of you means you got to reshape your character. Yes. See, the problem we have in, in the West is we're always trying to be our own distinct identity different from other people. Here's the paradox with being a Christian. God's trying to make one new man. That might have that went... What, what, what do you mean, Brother Bradley? You realize when you read the characteristics of a Christian, he doesn't give variations that are adoptable by ethnicity or location. He gives you exactly what I'm looking for. Are, are, are you online? Can, can I have one minute? I'm landing. I, I promise I'm landing. Right? Can, can, you, can you meet me at Galatians chapter 5? Right? Galatians chapter 5. And I, I think the verse I need is 22 and 23. Right? Watch, watch this, because what God is trying to do, he's not trying to make a, a nation of people who have individual mindsets. He's trying to make a nation of people who have similar identity through the faith of the word of God. Amen. And the shaping is going to be done by the work of the Holy Spirit, which is given to all of us. Amen. What does that mean, Brother Bradley? Christians might laugh differently, may physically look differently, 
but their characteristics spiritually should be twinning. There was this show, and don't y'all go watch it because it's crazy. <laughs> Something flaming. What was it? Twin flaming. If you, if you ever, don't, don't do it. <laughs> don't. That show messed me up for like two weeks. <laughs> but it was, it was dealing that one of, the, one of the premises in the show that there is someone who is identically made for you. And you're so compatible that they become your twin flame in life. You all right? I know some folks look at me, Brother Brad, where you going with this? You realize the person sitting to your left and your right, in front of you and behind you, you should all spiritually look the same. Because you have the same spirit. And when this spirit is allowed to work in your life, Guess what it's going to produce? But the fruit of the spirit is love. Can I have a minute? Can I have a minute? Right? I don't, I don't want to touch love yet. I just need you to bring your mind to the definitive article, the. Can you see it? The fruit. Now, notice fruit, when you look in the text, is plural. All right, right. But it is singular in nature, developing one character. The elements coming together are the making of us. This is what we, as children of God, ought to look like. But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy. Am I in the text? Is there peace next? What's next? Gentleness? Patience? Somebody said, who said long suffering? Long suffering cannot take long suffering in the land. Because this is the making of us, right? This is how God is making us. Because he's washed you so that his spirit can live within you to make you to be able to be strong enough to be stabbed and not retaliate with her. Because when your savior was stabbed, he retaliated with, Father, <laughs> forgive them for they know not what they do. Huh? Can, can, I, can, I, can I bring us back to 1 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 9? So you've been washed so you can be the house of the Holy Spirit who can turn your character around, and then God says, but they are sanctified. Mm -hmm. You are now set apart in your cleanliness, in the development of your character, you should now stand apart in a holy position. Amen. What does that mean? I don't conjoin myself to evil no more. Come on, come on. Come on. Why? Because I am set aside for good use by my Savior. Yes. Be ye not unequally yoked with unbelievers, Lord. Didn't I tell y'all I had something to preach today? Yes, Let me land, because y'all cold, y'all cold. He says, but you are washed, you're set apart, and here, here, here is where I'm going to have a problem, Brother Ivan. He says, but you are justified. I can't even get to in the name of the Lord. But you are justified. You remember when Paul said, such were some of you? Did he find you? When he listed all those sins? Was anybody able to say, I I I'm in there? It's like Prego, Brother Bradley. It's in there. A anyone willing to say, yeah, that was me? You know, some, some, of, us, some of us might be connected to a few of those. Hey, Amen, somebody? And, 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 and now that I'm looking at the scriptures, now that I'm studying my Bible, I am learning God's position against those who are practitioners of those things. The psalmist at one time said that his face against, is against all who do evil. 
Meaning you can't make spiritual progress until you give up and let God win. You could not be in God's presence being engulfed or tainted by sin. Let me help somebody see this. Y'all remember the woman with the issue of blood? You know why her mental faculty was so shook? It wasn't, it wasn't because her menstrual cycle was happening for 12 years. Huh. That's, that's heavy, isn't it? Because you would figure she's physically depleted because of what she's going through with her cycle. But that wasn't the greatest problem. The greatest problem, according to the law, she was defiled. Because she was un... Oh, come on, somebody! And since she was unclean, what could she not do? She could not come close to her God and worship him. See, somebody here, somebody here knows somebody is home because the cold kept them from worshiping their God. Oh, I'm meddling now, right? It's too cold in that building to praise God, but it's too hot in hell not to. Anybody on <laughs> And since God has declared me not guilty, I dare not come into his presence without praise. Because I know who I used to be. But now I've been set free. And call on my father Abba, Abba, and he hears me. Why? Because he made me right. Yes. Yeah. I was guilty. Yeah. Stood before the judge, and the lawyer got up. The prosecutor gets up. The bailiff gets up and reads the charges. Christopher Bradley, you have been found guilty of puff puffing. And not passing. Christopher Bradley, you've been found guilty of smoking, drinking, wilding out, lying, gossiping. These are the charges against you. My lawyer gets up while I'm in the jury box waiting on my verdict. My lawyer gets up and pleads my case. The lawyer gets up and says he, he knew not what he was doing. Is there a way, your honor, for him not to be found guilty? The judge turns and says, well, somebody's got to stand in his place because the verdict has been rendered guilty. So my lawyer takes off his jacket stands up and said, I'll take his place. When John said that the Lord is our propitiation yeah. of our sins, yeah. even though the verdict was guilty, yeah. Jesus got up and said, I'll pay the price. Yeah. While he was on Calvary's cross, he uttered the words, Tetra Lesta, saying the debt has been paid in full. Then the Bible tells me he gave up the ghosts when he went down in the depths of hell. I'm told that he took the keys to death, taking away the power of death over us, removing the sting from sin from us, came back to the depths. The honor looked at my lawyer, looked at me, and said, Christopher Bradley, you have been now found not guilty because the price has been paid for your penalty. Walk free, my friend. Walk free. This is why Paul, three times in Ephesians 5, uses the word walk. Walk in faith. Walk in love. Walk in truth. Lord have mercy. I got to stop. But you can only do that when you allow the Lord to make you over. 
And as long as sin is on your ledger, you can't be made over. How are you made over? You're made over by hearing the gospel. Believing that Jesus Christ is the son of God. Repenting of your sins. Confessing faith and being baptized. Yeah, I know everybody's telling you, you don't need to be baptized. Stop listening to everybody. Because everybody can't get you into heaven. Amen, somebody. There's a gatekeeper. Oh, there's a gatekeeper. And that gatekeeper is coming with a record book. And he's going to look for your name in this second book. It's called the book of life. And if your name ain't written in that book, there's no entrance. Some of y'all know it. If you're not on the VIP list, you can't get in the club. You got to stand in line, everybody else. And you still won't even get in. Come on. All God is asking you is let me remake you. Because if I can remake you, let me end with this. Y'all old enough to remember the $6 million man? Yes. Yes. Just a few old heads up in here. Yes. And the show will come on, we'll make them stronger. We'll make him better. We'll make him faster. He'll be able to leap over buildings. And, come on, come on, somebody. Come on, somebody. Let, 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 me, let me see if I can find one Christian that has been able to leap over something because God is now in your life. Oh, I know it's somebody here because some of y'all done leaped over anger. Y'all done leaped over fear. You done leaped over anxiety. But they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength and they will fly like, Lord have mercy. I got the land. I got the land. Guess what? God is telling you, when I remake you, I'll help you overcome so much. And the things that you don't overcome, my peace is going to be sufficient. Just the fact of knowing God's on my side lets me know I don't have to win every battle right now. Amen? Because I know as long as God's on my side, there's one battle that I'm winning. Heaven's going to be mine. Come on, wait, get on your feet, stand up, let your blood circulate. If you need prayer, ask the church to pray for you. Coming on, we're a praying church. If, you, if you're standing in need of help, ask the church to help pray for you. We will pray for you. And all I want you to do is when you go out of here today, is remember the making of you is special because you are special to God. If there's one willing to come obey the gospel today, let's hear a word of invitation.